Contemporary issues in adult education refer to the various events, policies, and developments of an educational nature which exist in the modern world. The videos this week will explore the current trends and developments in adult education in Canada. In this particular video, we'll examine the history and impact of professionalization and credentialism on adult education in Canada. During this video, please reflect on the following analysis questions. What are the traits and characteristics of a profession? What is the history of professionalization of adult educators in Canada? What are the advantages and disadvantages of professionalization? And how might increased professionalization impact adult education in Canada? When examining the rise of professionalization in adult education, it's important to understand what distinguishes a profession from other occupations. According to Greenwood, professions are distinguishable because they possess the following traits and characteristics. A systematic body of theory, authority recognized by the clientele of the professional group, broader community sanction and approval of this authority, a code of ethics regulating relations of professional persons with clients and colleagues, and a professional culture sustained by formal professional associations. In addition, Wise describes a profession as an occupation that seeks to regulate itself by developing a consensus concerning what its practitioners must know and be able to do, and by developing an accreditation and licensing system to ensure the transmission of that knowledge and skill. While well, history has witnessed the professionalization of a variety of occupations, including medicine and law, the issue of increased professionalization in adult education continues to be a subject of debate. The growth in adult education activities in Canada has resulted in increased demand for more and better trained adult educators. This demand has sparked debate in the adult education community as to whether adult educators should be more professionalized. There are numerous arguments for and against increased professionalization of Canadian adult educators. According to Welton, the Canadian tradition of adult education lies in its civil societarian focus. Early adult educators engaged with ordinary Canadians in their struggle to find new ways of making sense of their world and new solutions to the problems associated with industrialization, capitalism, and urbanization. This is evidenced by the Canadian adult education movements that we've explored earlier in this course, including Frontier College, the Antigonish Movement, the National Farm Forum, and the Women's Institute. During the 1930s, a Canadian Association for Adult Education was formed signaling a more professional approach to adult education. During this period, there was also a shift from adult education as a means of social change to adult education as a service. The period following World War II ushered in an era of adult education for technical training and education for economy. It was during the 1950s that a sense of professionalization began to emerge as opportunities for acquiring training in adult education emerged. The aims of adult education shift during this time from a need based on observable deficiencies to need based on vocational training and professional development. The shift from a resource-based economy to the knowledge-based economy that we face today has forced yet another new direction for adult education. The formerly distinctive Canadian tradition of education for social change has shifted to one that responds to the needs of the individual and the market. According to Hake, the trend towards increased professionalization has altered the aims of adult education in Canada away from education for social change to its current state as a marketplace for educational products and potential consumers. There are many who believe adult educators should pursue a path toward increased professionalization. According to Crandall, adult educators would benefit from professionalization because it would serve to validate practitioners' existing knowledge, skills, and experiences. Advocates of professionalization in adult education also cite recognition and credibility as its main advantage. The professionalization of adult education has aided to some degree in enhancing prestige, providing greater credibility, and increasing recognition for practitioners. As a result, more academically able people are drawn to the profession, while those already in it are encouraged to remain. Professionalization is also credited with increasing an adult educator's earning potential, which is beneficial to both practitioners and society as a whole. Improved performance through the advancement of identified competencies is another perceived benefit of professionalization. According to Galbraith and Gilly, identification and improvement of competencies will provide professionals with a tool for self-assessment and professional growth, provide a common set of concepts and vocabulary that will improve communication among professionals and other professional groups, provide professional preparation programs with information needed for program development, provide an opportunity for a common core of knowledge and skills to be demonstrated by the adult educator, allow the public and profession to distinguish between those who are qualified and those who are not, 
and provide a basis for defining an emerging field of study. The process of professionalization is also promoted as a mechanism to protect the public from misconduct and incompetence through the development of competencies and adherence to ethical standards. Proponents of professionalization believe that professionalization would protect against potential government intervention as well as protect clients from incompetent and unethical educators. There are others who believe that professionalization is detrimental to the adult education field and contradicts the historical roots of adult education in Canada. According to Illich, professionalization sets up an expert-dependent relationship which directly conflicts with the historical model of adult education in Canada. Early adult education initiatives exemplified a tradition of ordinary men and women working cooperatively to empower others and improve life within their communities. The individuals leading these initiatives were not experts coming in to prescribe to individuals and their communities what must be done, but rather were volunteers helping to empower and improve the quality of life for others. Professionalization in adult education has also been criticized for promoting a sense of authority or power, which sets up a relationship of dependency and conflicts with the concepts of self-directed learning and emancipatory participation. Contrary to being experts with sanctioned authority, adult educators are typically co-learners, employing a diverse range of methods, techniques, and devices with the goal of developing self-directed, lifelong learners. In addition, it's also been argued that the professionalization of adult educators conflicts with the traditional model of professionalization. While most traditional professions offer credentials to their members through standardized testing of cognitive knowledge, such as in licensing and certification exams, it's been suggested that this approach is not useful in assessing the skills needed in working with adult learners, as these skills are so diverse. It has also been proposed that the professionalization of adult education increases the cost of adult education and protects the economic interests of the educator rather than protecting the learner from incompetent educators. Collins strongly argues that the misguided preoccupation with professionalization has diverted adult educators from other forms of organization that could be more empowering for themselves and for their students. Finally, professionalization assumes a certain level of competence that once achieved may lead to the assumption that further learning on behalf of practitioners is no longer required. Professionalization runs the risks of adult educators becoming static. What makes the issue of professionalization of adult education even more complex is the fact that there is not one cohesive definition or identity regarding who is an adult educator. What it means to be an adult educator is constantly being reconfigured. In addition, many adult educators do not identify themselves as such, and a great deal of adult education in our society is largely invisible to the general public view. This invisibility, coupled with the wide range of individuals who currently engage in adult education practices, both formally and informally, make it difficult to ascertain just who the practitioners are that would or should be professionalized. Please reflect on the following synthesis questions. How might increased professionalization control and shape adult education practices and adult learning activities? Do you see professionalization as a desirable goal for adult educators? And if so, under what circumstances would the professionalization of adult educators be desirable? What competencies are required of an adult educator, and could these be measured through traditional licensing and certification exams? And is it possible to have increased professionalization and still maintain Canada's historical model of adult education?